there are eight NFL teams that have really, really interesting storylines that I'm excited to track this NFL season. Uh, I want to see how things develop. I do want to say first that I only have eight teams here. And so feel free to write in, uh, send me a message, leave a comment on YouTube. Uh, let me know which storyline or multiple storylines I leave out that you're like, hey, uh, these are things that you missed that I think are important to talk about and uh, track that. Let me know what storylines you think I'll leave out in this video. Uh, but number one, I want to start. It's very glaring and obvious. It's the probably the biggest storyline uh, in the NFL right now. Like I went to go get my hair cut the other day. What a haircut? What was I doing? I was getting blood drawn. And the guy drawing blood clearly didn't know very much about football, but he's like, what do you think about the Aaron Rodgers, you know, saga, I guess. He said, what do you think about Aaron Rodgers? I'm like, oh, wow. If if even this guy is asking me about Aaron Rodgers, it's got to be the biggest story in the NFL. I mean, this guy who clearly, I asked him, like, who's your favorite team? He said the Denver Broncos, and then he couldn't tell me who the Denver Broncos starting quarterback was. So clearly, like, not the biggest football fan, but he knew about the Aaron Rodgers deal. And Aaron is upset. Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to play in Green Bay anymore. He even skipped mandatory minicamp. And this situation has led to be to there being two sides. You're either, uh, are you team Aaron Rodgers or do you side with the Packers? And no matter what side you're on, it's really interesting to see like what is going to happen. I don't know. He's been the starting quarterback in Green Bay for 13 years. He won them a Super Bowl. He's been the NFL MVP three times. In fact, he's coming off of, he literally won the NFL MVP just last year. So what's going to happen? Are they going to trade him? Is he going to hold out? Is, you know, maybe he won't play at all next year. Maybe he comes back midseason. Uh, I, I don't think the Packers are going to trade Aaron Rodgers because to trade him right now, all it does is cost Green Bay a ton of money. They're like, I, it makes way more sense for them to do it next year. Uh, and I maybe they trade him next offseason. That's really when it would financially make sense for Green Bay. Uh, and then what if former first round pick quarterback Jordan Love starts week one for Green Bay? And then what if Jordan Love plays really well? And what if Aaron comes back week eight or nine? But while he's been gone, Jordan Love was just doing great the entire time. And the Packers are seven and two and like have a good record. And Jordan's working. And they're like, well, it would if the Packers are planning on trading Aaron next offseason. Is it possible that they could roll with Jordan Love and, you know, make Aaron the backup quarterback? Like, that sounds insane to have a guy go from being the NFL MVP to maybe sitting on the bench or maybe not play. It's crazy. And I, there are so many potential things that could happen here. Maybe he just comes back and leads Green Bay to a Super Bowl. Like, that's possible. I don't know. It's, it feels like there are so many possibilities. Could he get traded? Is he going to sit? Is he going to be a backup? Is he going to be an amazing starter and have a great year? I have no idea what's going to happen. It seems like Aaron would rather sit out than play for Green Bay. Like He's just like, hey, I'm going to use my power that I have to not play. I, certainly, I would imagine Green Bay Packers fans wouldn't cheer for that. It's very weird to me. I will say it, it's also very interesting that, have you noticed we haven't heard any reports that Jordan Love is awful? Like, if Jordan Love is doing bad at training camp, it would have leaked out. We would have heard like, oh, hey, at minicamp, Jordan Love was terrible. At minicamp, not training camp. But if Jordan Love had been terrible at minicamp, players would have come out and said, oh, we need Aaron back. Like they would have been very vocal and very clear. And instead of that, um, we haven't heard those stories. In fact, all I've seen is that Jordan Love is really good at minicamp. And when Aaron is in Hawaii or golfing or doing, you know, hosting Jeopardy, whatever he's doing, Meanwhile, Jordan Love is in the hot sun working every day with his teammates. Emotionally, like, you kind of move on. So it's in, it's going to be really interesting. I, I don't know what's going to happen here. And I, I guess, I, I would it be awful if Aaron doesn't play? I don't know. What, what would happen to the Packers? Like, if Aaron doesn't play, are the Packers still good? They've been to the NFC Championship game two years in a row. Um, but they're missing their MVP quarterbacks. I just don't know. It's very fascinating to me. However, Jordan Love... Was a first-round pick, really talented, throws the ball really well. Uh, had problems in college, but I would imagine sitting for a year behind Aaron Rodgers, working with a really great coach, Matt LaFleur, easily the best coach Jordan Love has ever had in his football career. I'd imagine Jordan Love got way better. What's going to happen? It's a massive storyline. What will happen with Aaron Rodgers? And subsequently, what will happen with the Green Bay Packers? Storyline number two is this. Will the Arizona Cardinals be good? Arizona head coach Cliff Kingsbury is on the hot seat. If he doesn't win this year, he's going to get fired. It's 
Cliff had a losing record in college as the head coach at Texas Tech. I mean, that's crazy to go be a, a, a losing record in college and then still get hired as an NFL head coach. That's very weird. But at the time, I explained it away. I said, well, you know, he was bad at recruiting. And now in the NFL, he doesn't have to worry about recruiting. But also in the NFL now, in two years in Arizona, he's got a losing record as well. And you're like, oh, maybe Cliff is just a bad coach. And some people are good coordinators and bad coaches. Maybe Cliff is a good coordinator, bad head coach. I don't know. But we're going into year three. And it's year three for Cliff. It's also year three for his quarterback, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray has a ton of talent. And you don't want to waste the best years of Kyler Murray's career with a coach who can't win. And so expectations have got to go up in Arizona. They added star receiver DeAndre Hopkins last year. Uh, He was great, had a huge impact. This year, they added uh, defensive lineman J.J. Watt. Uh, Their defensive line got better. I mean, the Cardinals are trying to make their defense better. Two years in a row, they drafted linebackers in the first round of the NFL draft. Uh, In 2020, they drafted Isaiah Simmons. Uh, This past year, in 2021, they drafted Zayvon Collins. They're trying to get better. They're trying to make their defense better. They've got the right quarterback. I, I firmly believe in Kyler Murray, but they have to be good. If they're not good... This fall, then Cliff Kingsbury is for sure going to get fired. I'd be shocked if the Cardinals were awful and Cliff Kingsbury kept his job. Storyline number three has to do with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I guess the question is, will Baker Mayfield, the Browns quarterback, get a big long-term contract extension? Uh, Baker was drafted in 2018 along with Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. And for Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen, it's fairly obvious they're going to get big extensions. Josh Allen was an MVP candidate last year. Two years ago, Lamar Jackson won the NFL MVP. Like, they're incredible. Some of the best quarterbacks in the entire NFL. Is Baker in that category? No. I, I, he's not. And so, Baker's a question. He had a really good rookie year. He broke some quarterback rookie records despite having his coach fired and not being, you know, being on the Cleveland Browns. Uh, but year two is bad. Baker had uh, 22 in- touchdowns and 21 interceptions in 2019, two years ago, in his second year in the NFL. It was really, really not a, a good look, and they had to fire Freddie Kitchens and bring in a new head coach. And now, last year in 2020, the Browns got a new head coach, a really, really good head coach, Kevin Stefanski. He revamped the offense. They got a new general manager, Andrew Barry. Uh, and the Browns won their first playoff game in forever, which is like, oh, it's so cool. It's It's been years and years and years. And to some people, that should be enough. They're like, you know, some people say, well, they argue, well, Baker brought the, bank, uh, brought the Browns back to the playoffs for the first time in forever. Maybe that's enough. And certainly Baker is already, if not the best quarterback they've had in years since like Bernie Kosar. He's definitely the most stable quarterback they've had in a long time. Like, how many times did they have a new quarterback every year, even sometimes every other game? Baker's been their guy now for a while. So it's he's been stable. He won them a playoff game. He's been very good. But will Baker get a new big contract? Huh. I mean, if I'm the Browns coaching staff, I'm like, we worked with this guy for one year. He was solid and did some good stuff. But let's see how he does this year. If I were the Browns, I'd want to see more progress before I gave Baker a massive contract. I'd want to wait and see how this fall goes. And then based on how the fall goes this year, we'll give Baker a new contract or not. But that's a storyline to follow. I mean, what if, what if the Browns gave Baker a big contract and he became a Joe Flacco type where he had a good year and then fell off a cliff after that? I don't think that's who Baker is. I think Baker is a guy who has been an underdog his whole life, who has always overachieved. He one walked on and won the Heisman Trophy. He became the number one overall pick. He got the Cleveland Browns won a playoff game with the Cleveland Browns. Like, how, did you think that was going to happen last year? That's crazy. That's very cool. And so, I have faith in Baker Mayfield. But even me, I still would want to see more. I'd be like, oh, let's see how the year goes, and then talk about giving Baker a new contract extension. We know Lamar is going to get one. We know Josh Allen's going to get one. What will happen with the Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield? Storyline number four is the New England Patriots. Last year, the Patriots lost their legendary quarterback, Tom Brady. Uh, and the Patriots had a down year. They went 7-9. and nine. They missed the playoffs. They haven't missed the playoffs in over a decade. The last time the Patriots missed the playoffs was 2008. 
when Tom Brady tore his ACL in game one against Kansas City. So last year was not a typical year for Bill Belichick and the Patriots. Now, this offseason, the Patriots have reloaded. They added a bunch of players. They signed people. They made moves. They drafted a young quarterback, Mac Jones, from Alabama. Remember, Bill Belichick and Nick Saban, uh, the coach at Alabama, head coach at, uh, in New England, head coach in Alabama. They're good friends. I have no doubt they talked a lot about, hey, should we draft Mac Jones? We get the chance. Clearly, Nick Saban was like, yeah, pull the trigger on that guy if you can. And the Patriots signed a bunch of free agents, including uh, two new tight ends, John New Smith and Hunter Henry. Like, the Patriots, I would imagine, are going to be a much better team this year than they were last year. Now, one question is how soon will it be before Mac Jones plays in New England? He's a rookie quarterback. Uh, Cam Newton is a quarterback for now, but Cam Newton was very, very unconvincing last year. Uh, he had, Remember, he had more interceptions than passing touchdowns, and he ran for more touchdowns than he threw. That's just a weird, like, huh, it's not a good year. It's not a sign of excitement. Question number one is... Uh, when will Mac Jones play? Earlier, later, we don't know. And then question number two is, how good will the Patriots be? The Buffalo Bills won their division last year. The Buffalo Bills won the AFC East, uh, a division that the Patriots historically have dominated in the last 20 years. And so it's going to be really interesting to see who wins the AFC East this fall. I, you know, Can the Patriots take it back from Buffalo? Can they become king of the hill again? You know, New England, Buffalo, what if Miami, could the Miami Dolphins sweep in as like a third team to come in and as a dark horse and take the AFC East? I don't know. Uh, I think it, right now it's Buffalo's division to lose and the Patriots have to come in and try to take it from Buffalo. So do the Miami Dolphins. Uh, but I'm really excited to see how good will the Patriots be this year in 2021. Storyline number five, the Bengals. Oh boy. Uh, in the 2021 NFL draft, the Cincinnati Bengals drafted wide receiver Jamar Chase, number five overall. He played with the Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow in college at LSU. And no doubt, Jamar Chase is going to light up the NFL. He's going to be a stud. Like, I'm really excited. He's a great player. He's going to be great in the NFL. But I do have to ask the question. Will Jamar Chase help Cincinnati win more games this fall? Like, did the Bengals actually get better, I guess, is the question? Because, first of all, I think Jamar Chase is going to make the Bengals more exciting to watch. He's going to score a bunch of touchdowns. They're going to be fun. Like, back shoulder fades and great throws. And, like, Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase. I cannot wait to watch it. And Bengals fans swear their offensive line got better this offseason and through the draft. Uh, and I'm kind of like, well, we'll wait and see. But remember, Joe Burrow got hit a ton last year, had a season-ending injury. Now, some people would argue that part of why he got hit so much is because he had to hold on to the ball because nothing was open downfield, and adding a receiver is going to make a big impact on the Bengals' offense and help Joe Burrow get hit less. It's possible. Uh, but my question is, are the Bengals going to be more exciting to watch, like score a lot of points and be fun? Or will they actually be a better team and win more games? Because... I think the Bengals are fun. They're exciting. I want to watch them a lot. I'm not convinced yet they're a better team that's going to win more games. And that that's what I want to see from Cincinnati this year. How is that Jamar Chase pick going to pan out? And does it make them a team that can win more games? Because remember, uh, DeAndre Hopkins got traded from Houston to Arizona last year. Arizona didn't make the playoffs. Arizona wasn't way better. And I love Jamar Chase. I, I think DeAndre Hopkins right now is a better player than... Jamar Chase is going to be this year. Uh, you know, give give it time, he'll develop. But uh, my point is a receiver does not necessarily mean you win games. Like adding a great receiver, one of the best in the NFL, didn't make Arizona suddenly a way better football team that won more games. So, okay, like Bengals fans yell at me all the time, we're going to win more, we're better, the offensive line, this, that. Jamar Chase was the right pick, we'll see. He's going to be exciting. Does he actually make the Bengals a better football team? That remains to be seen. Number six is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They won the Super Bowl last year, uh, but they only made the playoffs as a wild card team. They didn't even win their division. It's very interesting to me. Because of the weird offseason last year due to COVID, they had a slow start, and Tampa got better and better and better as the year went on. I mean, they were a different team at the end of the year, 
than they were week one. By week 17, by the playoffs, they were just a way more cohesive unit that played better together and did better stuff. So now, this fall, they returned all 22 of their starters on offense and defense. Uh, and, and by the way, they do that after just winning a Super Bowl. So the gang should be back together and in theory should be better than they were before. So I guess the question is, could Tampa repeat? Could Tampa win a Super Bowl again this year? They have Tom Brady. They have their team back together. Their division is full of rebuilding teams. You have Carolina with Sam Darnold. Atlanta has a new coach and were awful last year. The Saints lost their Hall of Fame quarterback, Drew Brees. So I guess the question is, how much better will Tampa be this year, and could they repeat? Number seven, the Detroit Lions. Uh, Detroit is rebuilding. And that is something that their fan base has seen many, many times, over and over again. Uh, I would argue this might be the best, if not one of the best opportunities for the Bengals. Sorry, for well, the Bengals were last last uh, team. This might be one of the best opportunities for the Detroit Lions to win and build a good team they've had in a long, long time. I thought they had an opportunity in the Jim Caldwell era. They fired Jim Caldwell a little bit early before they really had a chance to see it all play out. Uh, but right now, I feel surprisingly optimistic about the Detroit Lions. First of all, they hired a new head coach, Dan Campbell. Uh, remember, he made headlines with a weird quote in his opening press conference. He said, they're going to bite a kneecap off. And I don't really know what that means. It was kind of a moment where... He got passionate and started just talking and kind of like lost track in his excitement, right? And I, the, the football world crucified Dan Campbell for that quote. I don't really know. I don't see the crime there. Like obviously biting off a kneecap, not something you should do, but that's not what he means. It just seemed like a guy who got really passionate about his love for the game. And I don't know that that's a bad thing. Like if the only bad thing you can point to is that, hey, the head coach of the Detroit Lions got passionate about football at a press conference. I'm like, is that really the worst thing? Like maybe the Lions could use some passion. You could argue that's exactly what the team needs. And he also did a decent job. Dan Campbell did as the Dolphins interim head coach. And back in 2015, when Joe Philbin got fired. So I don't know. Dan Campbell might not be the worst thing. And then Anthony Lynn is the offensive coordinator in Detroit. He struggled a lot as the L.A. Chargers head coach. Uh, he could not win close games in the last couple of years. But he's also a great offensive coordinator. Like He is the reason why Justin Herbert won Rookie of the Year last year. So the Lions, without a shadow of a doubt, we can talk about that coach. They have a great offensive coordinator, though, in Anthony Lynn. They also traded for quarterback Jared Goff. And I'm not really excited about Jared Goff. I'm not a big fan of Jared Goff. Um, I'm not sure he's going to be the franchise quarterback that Detroit needs. But in that trade, not only did the Lions get Jared Goff, they also got two first-round picks. So even if Jared Goff is awful and isn't the quarterback that they need, they also have four first-round picks in the next two years, so they could either use one of those picks to replace Jared Goff in the draft uh, or they could, you know, make a package deal. Like say, hey, we'll trade two first round picks to move up in the draft to like a top three pick and go get a quarterback. But there are so many opportunities here for the Lions to build a team. They've got assets. They've got a good coach or two. They've got a quarterback, Jared Goff, who may or may not work. But even if he doesn't work, don't panic. You can replace him. Um, Detroit has a really good opportunity here to do well in this rebuild. Probably the best opportunity they've had in a long, long time to rebuild their football team and do a good job. So I, I just think the Detroit Lions right now are a storyline worth keeping track of. I, it's the first time in my lifetime I've ever been like, huh, I want to watch the Lions play. I'm really curious. Can they be good? I don't know. But it's it's worth noting, like, they're doing some interesting stuff and it's worth paying attention to. My number eight storyline to keep track of this year is the New York Jets. The Jets are also rebuilding. Uh, but the Jets have three things that I love. They've got a good GM, a good head coach, and a good young quarterback. First is a GM, Joe Douglas. Uh, this dude has done a really good job of drafting and building this team. It's unfortunate he got there a little too late to help Sam Darnold. But this time around with their second young quarterback, Zach Wilson, like he's actually, he's building off the moves he made last year. They got Mekhi Becton in, in the first round. They got a couple of good draft picks last year. Uh, Denzel Mims in the second round. Ashton Davis at safety. They're using those moves they made 
building off of it and continuing to build a good team around Zach Wilson. They got uh, a big receiver, Corey Davis. They got um, they're making move after move. Like they're doing interesting stuff. And I'm like, huh? They they drafted Elijah Vera Tucker in the first round, uh, another offensive lineman for Zach Wilson. So I I think that Joe Douglas is a really good general manager. I, I would put him up there, probably right behind a guy. Uh, Chris Ballard, the GM of the Colts, who I think is the best GM in the NFL right now. Then you have head coach Robert Sala. This is his first time as an NFL head coach. Uh, I We don't really know whether he's going to be a head, good head coach or not, but I do know that he was a great coordinator in San Francisco. Last year, he was a 49ers defensive coordinator. His guys loved him. They fought hard for him. I mean, go watch, even at the end of meaningless games last year, the 49ers defense was giving incredible effort, working hard, making plays, uh, and they fight hard for their coach. And that matters to me to have a coach who is worth fighting for, that you believe in, that you want to work hard for. And so I, I Robert Sala presents really well. He's great at press conference. Seems like a dude who's well put together. And I know how much his players loved him last year in San Francisco. So I, I feel very optimistic about Robert Sala. Now, the Jets have also rookie quarterback Zach Wilson. They drafted him number two overall. I firmly believe he was the best quarterback available in the NFL draft last year. He's got a great arm, can move around really well. He's got a this aura, this confidence, this swagger that I really like. I'm like, ah, oh, that dude, that dude's got it. Like, he's not afraid. He wants the ball at the end of a game. And the GM is great. We know that. If Robert Sala, the head coach, and Zach Wilson, the quarterback, are as good as I think they're going to be, then the Jets could be really good as well, too. They're rebuilding. It's a process. Winning could take some time in New York. It always will to rebuild a football team. But I I, I really believe in Zach Wilson. I think they got a steal drafting. I can't believe I'm like, wow. I, I get why the Jaguars drafted Trevor Lawrence. It's the guy they were expected to pick. And they to deviate from that and then fail would be suicide. So I, I get why they drafted Trevor Lawrence, not Zach Wilson. But I, I firmly believe Zach Wilson was the better quarterback. The Jets got him. And... I just feel really, really good about the future of the Jets, where they're going, where they're headed, their plan, how it's working out. And I'm really excited to watch and see how the Jets do this fall in 2021.